Look at my seat, you guys. Oh, it's not a seat. You say it's a Bronco? Yeah, it is. We are back to work on Betty Boop the Bronco, and it is very exciting. I am wrapping up the last plug for the intake uh, with Teflon tape so that we don't have any vacuum leaks because it is time to install our fuel injection. I am so friggin' excited to run Holly EFI. It is not something we have experience with, which will be perfect for you guys to watch because you guys enjoy watching us learn, right? Because usually we make mistakes and then you get to laugh at us and learn along with us. This is gonna be fun. I'm really excited. Every time I laugh, the hood like moves and it freaks me out. Trusting this little bar here. Aaron, is it time? I think it is time. I already unbolted this here engine plate. Take our towels out. It has actually been like five months since we worked on the Bronco, since we set the engine in. We had to start on Roxy for Drag Week, which was amazing. If you haven't watched that series, you need to get on it. It was a lot of fun. Oh my God, was it a yeah. freaking blast or what? Yep, it was freaking awesome. Okay, so here's our gasket. Now, um, if you're doing fuel injection on your vehicle and you are replacing your carburetor, this fuel injection bolts up just like your carburetor would, assuming you had like a 4150 or something. That is what this intake is set up for, so our carb will bolt right onto it. Not our carb, our fuel injection. Our throttle body. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. It's a beauty. Really excited to get to use that factory air cleaner. Yep, it's gonna keep, look so good. Keep the vintage look, it's gonna be cool. Okay, I've got our gasket set down. Get this all lined up. Looks so sharp. Hey, that is awesome. Hey, let's put a bolt or four in. What do you say? It is so time to have the Bronco back in action. You guys have projects like that at home that just sit and wait? You may have like parts waiting for them, but you're waiting for some part that you're really excited about that you can't afford yet. <laughs> or you just have other projects that take precedence. We can relate. Uh, I need a different tool. Can you get a wrench to all of them? I think so, yeah. Can you get a wrench to all of them, babe? Tightening it in the X pattern. I'm happy with that. <laughs> it's bolted on. Okay, I went and grabbed our factory air filter box that we painted up all nice. And I'm gonna install it so that nothing falls into that throttle body. That would be a bummer. There we go. Like it. We have to run to the parts store before we can finish installing the fuel injection because we're missing pieces to install the linkage fully. The throttle linkage that comes from this back part of the linkage to the actual throttle body takes a ball end and we don't have that ball end so we have to go buy one. So instead I'm going to install the block off plate where the factory fuel pump rent. Rent, rent, went, W-E-N-T. Got the gasket on it and ready to go. We're gonna check out the program. Beautiful. Okay, we've made a trip to the store. We've got our linkage here, and we've got our little ball that I'm going to bolt to our throttle so that we can install that throttle linkage. Okay, let me go hit the pedal. Okay. Looks like it's maxed now. Yeah, looks good to me. Yep. Now. I'm going to stick some spark plugs in this here engine. Motor in the heads. Plugs. Yes, there. Mm -hmm. These spark plug sockets are so convenient. It's so annoying when your spark plug falls out of your socket. Don't you just hate that? Oops, I just realized I forgot. Something important. Anti-seize. Only got two spark plugs in before I realized that. Time to remedy this. Not sure this is a big enough container, but hopefully I have enough. 
But there's some old mechanics in the comment section that are like, I've been through six tubs of those. My time. Uh huh. I didn't mean to mock you, by the way. I love and appreciate you. Top of the morning to you. Saturday morning, actually. And we have been studying our instructions. Right, Aaron? Instructions. Instructions. Yeah. We have a basic knowledge of what to do with all this stuff, which is a really good thing. I don't want to say that it looks simple. So I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say, let's get to work and see what happens. Up close and personal with the Bronco engine for the temperature sensor installation. So I'm going to take out this plug that I had in, uh, previously installed. Our instruction said that we could install it in the intake or the head. And there's a perfect spot on the intake right here for it. So Aaron, there's already junk on here. Should I put some? No, I, that's plenty. That's perfectly fine. That's what I thought. Yep. The instructions did say though that you could put plumber's tape on it. I'll leave it. It'll be fine. Okay. Or it won't. We'll put it Word. All right, that's about as tight as I'm comfortable with tightening it into the intake. Sweet. Is there anything else I should do right here while I'm oh installed in this engine bay? I could start playing with plugging in some of the wires. We should see how the clearance is going to be. The clearance. I might need to trim you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Said plug wires? Um, no, not the plug wires, but the. Plug um, in some of the wiring. Yes. Oh, there's another temp sensor. Is there another hole in that intake? <laughs> temp sensor. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. This is our O2 sensor. This one plugs into these, and we have to modify our exhaust system for it. I have not done a lot of wiring in the past, so my confidence level when it comes to wiring is lacking. But I am stoked about this job because there isn't a ton, and so I feel like it's a good place for an entry-level person to gain confidence in wiring. There's good instructions. Yep. My confidence is definitely lacking in wiring, even though I've wired multiple vehicles all the way up and lots of fuel injection. Um, I scare myself. I'm glad she's doing it this time. <laughs> 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 so what's that wire say? This one is it, th the ignition. Yeah, so that's this, a cool thing. Holly has printed on yeah. all the wires what they are. Yep. So that's the switched ignition. That one's going to go inside. Straight to the key, it's right? Perfect. There's a hole right there. Okay. We'll, we'll get a grommet eventually. Okay. That's yes. simple. So is it is that coming down through the dash? Yep, that's it. This one says coil input. So this one goes to our distributor. The way I understand right? it, that's going to go to the tack output on the distributor. And we have that wire because we have a fancy MSD distributor that I'm very excited so about. So I'm going to put this guy back here, even though it'll come forward. Yeah. Then the big blue wire goes all the way back to the fuel pump. Yeah, that's fuel pump. So that guy, I'll we'll probably up. just set it right yeah, here. Yeah, that's fine. Our fuel tank's not in yet, uh, but we're probably going to kind of temporary run that wire back there. Uh, the wiring on this truck is a wreck, and I haven't decided totally what I'm going to do yet. I think all new stuff is going to run down passenger side. All factory stuff is down the driver's side because I want all the fuel injection separate and terminated very nicely. So we'll just see. We haven't decided yet. First thing is get it running and then we'll kind of finalize stuff after that. Absolutely. This here, did you talk about that? No, one? I haven't yet. So this is um, the crank sensor and we don't have one on this engine. So as we were reading through all the information, it said could or couldn't be used and we are not yeah. going to use it because we don't have a crank sensor on this engine. So yep. I know we'll uncoil it and put it somewhere better, but I just put this here so it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we understand it correctly that it doesn't have to have a crank sensor. I think, right. I mean, that's what I read. I think it takes the feed from the, um, that tack uh, wire. Yeah, the coil wire yeah. right here. I think it takes that and uses it to know when to squirt the injectors. These are the main power wires, hot yep. and cold, negative so, and positive. So the way straight to the battery. Yep. The way I do these, um, and this comes from trial and error, any aftermarket fuel injection system, I make sure that there are no fans on the same lug. So picture your battery. It's got the top lugs and the, the uh, side ones. 
I typically do that so that we've got four options to put wires to. I, anything with a motor, really, like a, a fan or something like that, you just do not want these together. So I'll typically put these on the side lugs, uh, run everything else off the top. Is that because the other motors draw more, or does it create noise no, in the system? It, or? It seems like everything I've read has been, it just creates a, a kind of a noisy connection. And when that tries to go back to your ECM, it, it can cause some issues and stuff like that. I don't understand wiring enough to know what it's actually doing. Through troubleshooting stuff in the past, the different companies have been very adamant to kind of isolate these and make them a clean connection. So we're going to do that. Okay. Okay. So this main plug is right here. So I'm going to plug that guy in. These guys have to be mounted. So this, see how that's got a like a groove in it? Yes. I'm gonna see if I can find one of those, one of those slip deals. things where it slides in there. Mm -hmm. Just mount that right there. And then these can or be mounted here. Here as well. Yeah, that'd be nice right there. I'm digging it. Uh -huh. It really does look simple. I yeah. hope it turns out to be. So if we can get the thing that slides in there and then put a little hole, that would be kind of nice if it was fixed right there. And that'll go back. The battery goes right here. Oh, you do. Well, sir. I just took my um, spark plug out of cylinder number one, and we gotta get this thing to top dead center so that we can stab that distributor that can d distribute me some spark to all my spark plugs and then to that cylinder and then that piston comes up and then the fuel squirts in there and then an explosion happens. Horsepower. I think I need a crank, a socket for the crank bolt. Yeah. Turn it with your hands. I can't, babe. The transmission's all installed. I ain't that strong, boy. I'll try. Uh, my shoulder popped instead. <laughs> What's this? What? What's this you need? What's this? I don't know. One, three millimeter? Three millimeter? One to three? I don't know, baby. Will you bring me my kombucha? Please. That's not big enough. Thank you. Junk's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody else drink kombucha? I like it. I drink from beer chip. Kombucha. <laughs> it sort of is like kombucha, but it's fermented wheat instead of fermented yeah. fruit and it's tea. Little, it's way healthier. 24. Where is That's it? it? Yes. We don't even need this dang AC compressor in here. Why is it here? Should take it out and sell it. Anybody want an AC compressor? I'm gonna turn this thing up and see if I can get top dead center. Okay. So we want to stop it when all the air has seemed like it's squeezed out, right? That signifies that the piston's gone all the way up. Essentially what we're going to do, because we don't have uh, one of the tabs that tells us where top dead center is, we've got a small um, screwdriver stuck down in through the spark plug hole and Aaron's going to tell me when he feels like the piston has reached the top, which yep. I think it's up there. I think it's there right now, but we'll see. Turn it this okay. way. A little more. Right. Nope. Back up a little bit. Okay. Okay. That's it. Cool. That is top dead center. If the piston's all the way at the top, that's all we need. Yeah. That's where it is. So, they say this is number one, so I believe them. Yep. We're going to point the button toward that and we're good to go. Yeah. Get the um, drive shaft down, the bottom of the distributor down on the drive shaft of the mm -hmm. oil pump. Before I stab this distributor, I'm going to put some lube right here in, in the channel where the distributor actually slides into. Recently, we had CRC reach out to us. They are mostly known for their brake clean products, but they have all kinds of stuff. And they sent us a big box of stuff. So this is one of the things that they sent. It's engine assembly lubes. So I'm gonna use some of this stuff. Cool. Okie dokie, y'all. I'm gonna get this guy rotated around, pointing at number one cylinder. just needs to drop right in there for me now, doesn't it? It's hanging up on that old pump, probably. It's like it wants to be right here because it rotates around to that point. But mm -hmm. it probably does. It's just the oil pump. I might have to turn it. That's pointing at number one right there. Yeah. But it wouldn't go all the way down. No. <laughs> I figured I was wiggling <laughs> on it too much. One of the times I looked over, it kind of was looking like it was leaned yeah, over. Yeah, it's, it's definitely kicked to the side. Let me grab a screwdriver. I wish there was a way to make it stay. It's just kind of floppy in there. Yeah. There's probably some trick that we just don't know. I'm sure there is. <laughs> I'm going to put some assembly glue in there to hold that shaft over. Just like a dollop of it? Just to make it stick to that one side. 
just a dollop will do you. Isn't that a tagline for sour cream? Mm -hmm. Miss Daisy sour cream? That kind of makes me want tacos right now. I think I've got it pinned over on one side. Okay. Come on, baby. So let's uh, turn the engine back and forth a little bit, see if it falls in. Okay. Yep, there it is. But we're off. Oh, geez. Now it's pointing way back <laughs> there. Um, okay. We're gonna pull it back out. Yep. Go one tooth over and do okay. that again. Oh, there it is. Went in. Yep, and it's pointed at one, right? Pretty close. It's kind of pointing away I mean, instead of straight. Really what matters is that it's pointing at number one spark plug wire. So we'll just make sure that whatever's here is number one. Right. I think it looks so freaking stellar. Yep. Oh, dang. I'm calling that good. <whistles> Let's install this cap. I'm going to face the MSD outward and we're going to mark number one so that in case we need to rotate this around or anything, we will know what spark plug goes where. This looks so pretty with the valve covers and everything. So we're not going to tighten this down yet, of course, because we're going to want to tweak it around to get the timing set. But that feels good. And we can still move it around. Perfection. I like it. Moving on. Oh, hi. We had a really fun week because the awesome folks at Haviland reached out to us. And anytime an actual respectable company reaches out to us and says, we love what you're doing, we want to work together, that is the best feeling after all the work we put into this show that you guys watch. So Haviland reached out and they said that they have this new product and they want us to use it on the show. To be quite frank, I think it's an awesome product. The box is an oil change. There's a plastic bag inside that contains six quarts of oil. <laughs> plastic bag. <laughs> this plastic bag. Good, you know it. No, no. This awesome <laughs> plastic bag. We were talking off camera about this, like all the value we see in this. I'm like, I don't want to seem salesy, but I see a lot of ways that this could be really useful. So you can empty your, once it's cooled, oil back into this bag and take it into your local parts store that will recycle the oil. I always struggle with that because I've got an oil bucket or something like that that I've got the old oil in and I don't want to go through the hassle of loading that up to take to have it recycled. But this I can see could be super convenient to pour the oil in and then take it to have it recycled. So. Not only that, but this is 70% less plastic when you buy your oil change in this box, especially if you're buying it per quart. I think this is a really cool product and I'm excited that they wanted us to use it and I'm excited to show it to you guys because I think a lot of you probably do your own oil changes at home like we do. It says I... plug free pour. <laughs> there are not many things more frustrating than trying to put oil in and when it does the chug thing and spills it's on your valve cover and your header. I don't remember them telling us that, but once I see it, yeah, that's cool. It makes sense because the bag's just going to collapse. And, uh -huh. Yeah. It has a lot of potential. Yeah, absolutely. There's parts of the box that walk you through the uses of it. So the actual cap comes out of the top. Let's put some oil in this dang engine. What do you say? <laughs> okay. Step one, I'm going to put this oil filter on. And I need to oil that o-ring, so I'm going to pop this open, which will be fun. It says I push open here. Obviously, do not use sharp objects to push the circle in because it's plastic in there. Oh, and there's our cap. Oh, that's cool. The actual neck slides into that hole. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, now it's all secure for pouring. Pop. Goes the weasel. Oil? On the O-ring. Oil filter going on. All right. I'm not even gonna use a funnel or anything. I'm just gonna try to pour this right in the valve cover. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> oh, there's a panel right here. Definitely not getting any glug glug gloves. Look at it. I'm gonna pause and get a detail on this. Yep. Oh. Are you freaking <laughs> serious right now? <laughs> Good thing it only holds five quarts. <laughs> oh my 
put it on the ground. <laughs> cool thing about this is there's a little side window here it says pull window flap to measure oil level so you can see how much oil you have left there's a lot left Alrighty, I put five quarts in this engine <laughs> and most of you know that this is a used engine we're not using break-in oil because it's got a lot of miles on it already so We've got five quarts in it and we'll check it once we get it cranked up. This was great. Massive thanks to Haviland for reaching out to us on this product and giving us so many kind compliments on the channel. It means a lot to us. And if you guys want to support companies that support Flying Sparks Garage, buy yourself some Haviland oil. Alrighty, it's awesome. We made a decent amount of progress on the Bronco today. The wires are headed to where they need to be. We need to take the time and sit down and make the spark plug wires. And really, once we get some fuel in this thing, get the tank up in there, we need to secure the body lift. That is one more thing that needs to happen before we can get everything finalized. But honestly, it's going to feel so good to get these wires terminated and just hit the key before we get everything all finished and all of the loom on the wiring and all of it placed where it's gonna be finely. It's just gonna be so cool to hit the key on this thing and I bet you'll see that on the next episode. I hope you guys enjoy a little bit of progress on the Bronco. It feels really good to be back wrenching on this thing, especially since warm weather's around the corner. We're going to want this rig back on the road. Also, if you want to be a part of the Flying Sparks Garage family and benefit from some pretty cool perks, go hit up our Patreon link in the description below. There's all kinds of different ways you can contribute. Tiers from 50 bucks a month, you get a shirt, you get a call with us every month um, to $2 a month for just saying tip of the hat. We appreciate what you're doing. If you're interested, go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like it, comment, share the channel, all that good stuff. We appreciate y'all so much. We'll see you next time.